Something a lot of people have been asking me to check out is a series called Heritage Minutes and it's on a channel called Historica Canada. Uh, as the name suggests, I believe it's videos that are around about one, mi one minute long and they show important moments or important people in Canada's history. Now, as I've mentioned on previous videos, I'm really interested in like educating myself and learning more about Canada's history. It's a country with a great, rich history and yeah, I want to find out as much as I can and I thought this would be great because I can learn about a lot of different topics in bites size videos and from a, yeah, a, a, quite a wide range of things I believe. So I've got 12 different videos I'm going to watch today, just have a short discussion on each and yeah really if you can give me your comments on the videos, your thoughts, that's where I'll find I'll learn even more. Uh, so I'm going to look at the top 12 most viewed videos on this channel uh, in reverse order so we'll get to the number one most viewed at the end. Uh, but really interested, this will be a nice journey, it should be a, a little bit of a longer video so if you're up for it we can enjoy all these videos learn as much as we can together and talk about them afterwards so this is this first one here is called the halifax explosion oh my god look at that yeah, thank god she's a half a mile away huh? she's loaded boys you gotta get out of here it's full of explosives children full of explosives go get out of here Finn. we're back in the school please now. get these children out of here that ship is gonna blow no mr coleman out of here that ship is gonna blow the train what people get out of here it's gonna blow up mission ship on fire stop train please god answer Coleman there's no time the train's coming in towards pier six I've got a warning come on Vince come on there are 700 people aboard it I've got to stop it come on come on acknowledge Halifax was devastated. 9,000 wounded, 2,000 dead, including Vince Coleman, dispatcher. That is utterly... That is horrific. I have never heard... I'm very embarrassed to say that I never heard of this uh, situation. What was even going on? Why was this ship... What was wrong with it in the first place that it was already damaged? Why was it filled with explosives? Was it purposely done or not? Was it just a terrible accident? 9,000 people were injured. 2,000 people lost their lives. That's a momentous moment, not just in Canadian history, but in just history in general. I'm really sad to say that I never knew about that. Embarrassed that I never knew that. The town of Halifax absolutely devastated, it said there, or destroyed, I think. Tell me what you think about that, what your knowledge is of that, how is that actually remembered today in Canada? An utterly tragic situation, uh, a huge loss of life, man, that is just, that's actually, yeah, very horrific, really sad to hear of that. Uh, but interesting to know, and I'm glad I did learn, it's just interesting to learn more about Canadian history, and that is part of history. Uh, next we've got Acadian deportation. Katie, 1755. Our ancestors came here from France to build a better life. We lived here happily for generations until the British decided they wanted our land. The men were called to a meeting and then imprisoned. They demanded we swear an oath to their king and took everything regardless. We were forced from Acadie, the only home we knew. Mon Acadie n'existe trop plus. From 1755 to 1763, over 10,000 Acadians were ripped from their homeland. Despite this, Acadian culture endures in Atlantic Canada. That is, that's a, another horrific situation and piece of history. That one, of course, is very different. The first situation was, to my limited knowledge with that video, just a terrible accident. And But this was an atrocity committed by the British. And 
it's not just Canada that suffered that, unfortunately. Other countries all over the world, uh, India, different countries all over, suffered at the hands of the British. I'm from the UK, and of course, this is just part of our history that we need to deal with and uh, just face to face, be face to face with it. Uh, it's horrific. I feel nothing but shame with regards to these. Uh, situations that people had to go through at the hands of the British. I want to know more about how that's actually remembered today. Uh, it's so sad you hear these situations where men are being taken away from their families, the families being ripped from their home. Uh, but again, as I mentioned, it's a story that is seen all around the world at the hands of not just the British, other coloniz colonizers as well. Uh, kind of shame, very shameful. Uh, two horrific stories to start. Hopefully, this one can be maybe a bit more positive. But we'll just wait and see. It's, these are part of history that you have to learn from. Uh, Elsie McGill. <clears throat> you must be the reporter. Come with me. So, Miss McGill, how does it feel being Canada's famous women engineer? The real story is the work we've done retooling this factory to build the Hawker Hurricane. Indeed. 40 planes last month, with a capacity of up to 100. Our fighters are over England as we speak. Of course, it pains me to see airplanes mass-produced like boxcars or baby carriages. But in war, we make concessions in favor of innovation. You must feel at home, though, managing all of these women. I'm not here to manage women. Well, you must admit, it is an unusual job. I'm the chief engineer here. I do what engineers do. That's all. What are we doing now? We are to win this war. We need to know how she flies. Elsie McGill was the world's first female aeronautical engineer. She oversaw Canada's production of Hawker Hurricanes during the Second World War, earning her the nickname Queen of the Hurricanes. Wow, now that is, yeah, complete 180 from the, the, the memories of the first two, uh, which were very sad and horrific. This was a great, inspiring story of a true hero Elsie McGill, another person I never knew anything about. I didn't want to know how she's celebrated in Canada today. She seems like an inspiration, not just for females, but for, me, for me, men as well. Uh, an engineer, but also a leader. And someone who seemed very humble as well. She didn't want to be known as someone who was managing, leading other women. She just wanted to be known as an engineer. But someone who created something so important, an aeronautical engineer. And wow, after the first two, it's so great to hear a, an inspiring story that I would love to learn more about her individually as well. She seems like a great person. Uh, so next we've got Chani Wenjak. Chani, I wanted to go back home. It was a thousand kilometers away. We forced them to go to the Indian Residential to school. More than 150,000 of us children had to go. They wanted to change us. Our Father in heaven, our Father in heaven hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Kill the Indian and the child. Whoa. That's it's strong. Been called cultural genocide. Cultural genocide. I survived residential school. My brother Johnny did not. Charlie Wenjack was one of thousands of children who died due to Canada's residential school system. More than 80,000 survivors and their families still live with its legacy today. Wow, that, again, heartbreaking, absolutely, uh, almost shocking. Like, it's, again, I have a, a great interest in history and I have a great his, uh, interest in learning about Canadian history. A big part of that, which I never knew before making these videos, is of the the First Nations people, of the people who, whose land it was. Uh, I This is something I'm very interested in finding out with other countries as well, like Australia, New Zealand. Something I never knew too much about with Canada, but people were, were telling me about these residential schools, how horrific it was that it mentioned cultural genocide, trying to change these people, take away their, their heart, their personality, their beliefs, to try and change them into something they, that, that was not them. 
Uh, obviously, things like this is important to learn about because we can only learn from the past to make sure it doesn't happen again in the future. Uh, things like this, again, when it's only with hindsight that you can look at things like this and see how terrible it was at the time. You don't know what the, the people's intention was. It seems negative. Uh, of course, it was. It's absolutely horrific. Uh, I want to know what Canadians think about this part of your history. How is it taught in schools? What do people learn about it? How do how are the sort of the the native people of Canada treated today? Uh, it's an interesting part of Canadian history. I had no idea before making these videos, but yeah, I've got a great interest in finding out more now. Uh, next, we've got the liberation of the Netherlands and the. This is something I watched a video on recently uh, about that relationship between Canada and Netherlands and the, the, the liberation of a town by Canadian military in World War II. So I guess this will be a, a, a more condensed version, but let's check it out. We fought our way through Italy and then headed for Amsterdam, sweeping for Germans along the way. Our worst fear was to catch a bullet in these last hours of the war. I was 15 when the Nazis invaded the Netherlands. More than 100,000 Dutch Jews never came home. Our men were put into forced labor. By 1945, we were starving. The food drops gave us hope. And then, the Canadians came. Before Amsterdam, I couldn't have explained why we were there, all those years away from home. But the Dutch showed us why it mattered. Papa wanted me to bring some soldiers home to thank them personally. And that's when I first saw Wilf. And I invited him over that afternoon. Marguerite Blaise married Lieutenant Wilf Gildersleeve. They moved to Vancouver where they raised eight children. Today, the Dutch still remember the Canadians who liberated them. Yeah, that's what I found out about on the video I uh, watched and reacted to, which was an expanded version of that. and gave a bit more insight into the, the situation in that story. I absolutely loved finding out about that. It's something I never knew about. To see how it's still, how the Canadian military and the Canadian soldiers and veterans are still celebrated today in that town in Netherlands is absolutely fantastic. It's not, and it's not just people who are alive at that time. It's still the, the younger generation are still being, are still celebrating these Canadian military professionals and veterans, they pass it on to the younger generation in that town and it's something that's so great. Uh, as I mentioned on a previous video, I'm a, I'm a fan of military, like uh, military history, a fan of the British military. And after finding out more about the Canadian military, I just love that connection between Canada and Netherlands. What Canada, Canadian soldiers did for that small town to liberate them should never be forgotten, not just with people in the Netherlands, but for people worldwide. It's a, a small uh, a small example of what the Allies did for the world to bring freedom to everybody. And we should all be very, very uh, respectful and of that memory. Uh, next is Terry Fox. Another video I reacted to was the story of Terry Fox and another very inspiring story. I'm looking forward to this one as well. I'm not special. Cancer happens to people all the time. I take one mile at a time, 26 miles a day. I want to set an example that will never be forgotten. Sometimes, it feels endless. But the pain I feel is nothing. I've seen little kids in so much pain. Somewhere, the hurting must stop. Terry Fox ran more than halfway across Canada to raise money for cancer research. Every year, millions of people around the world continue the marathon of hope in his name. Again, man, after I watched his his story, the story of Terry Fox, someone I never knew anything about, but I cannot see how anybody would be fail to be inspired by him. Such an such a hero, such an amazing man, someone who suffered a great, a, a, sorry, a horrific disease, suffered cancer, 
but instead of sitting back and just letting it letting it affect him, he actually took a hold of it and done something so great, ran across Canada. He what he said there he wanted to inspire others and that's exactly what he did, man, like with thousands, tens of thousands of children today, people today doing his run, learning about him and in turn learning about cancer and fighting against cancer. Uh, such a, an, an amazing guy. I found out after watching that previous video that they actually had a Terry Fox run here in Malaysia in December. Uh, the next time it's here, I'm definitely going to do it. It's some, his story should be known by as many people as possible. Uh, his heroism. And yeah, I'm just glad to have found out about it through this channel. Uh, such an amazing man. Uh, next we've got Chloe Cooley. Upper Canada, 17. I don't care what the law is. I will never be a slave. That word, I hate it. It rests on my tongue like rot. Peter, how does it feel to get paid for your work? There are rumors freedom's coming for us all. Freedom, you know that's all I want. Chloe, careful. Room men would rather sell you across the river to America than let you go free. Then I'll run. I've run before. Maybe this time for good. No! No! Just get her into the boat! No! Chloe! Chloe, no! Word of Chloe Cooley's resistance led to Canada's first legislation limiting slavery. After 200 years, slavery was abolished in Canada in 1834. Wow. Okay, first I've just got to say, I mean, with that actual video itself, it was so well produced, so well acted. That lady who acted in the main role was utterly fantastic. That is, you see the horrific, what, what, what happened to the horrific situation, you see the pain uh, that she suffered. I don't really know much about slavery in Canada. From being from the UK, we only really hear about it being from the USA and the the what the situation was there. I never really knew slavery existed in Canada. I guess it existed everywhere at that time to some extent. Again, it's an area I would love to learn more about and just find out more about that part of Canada's history. Uh, but this story specifically, absolutely inspiring again. Her, she, her fighting against it inspired legislation that eventually stopped slavery. You've seen that, I just, like, people like this should still be celebrated today. I hope this woman, Chloe Cooley, is still remembered, still known in Canada. You can tell me, tell me more about these situations and these people, how they are remembered in Canada today. Uh, that one again, very horrific. These are going from horrific to hero heroic and it's up and down, but it's really great to find out these parts of, these varied parts of Canada's history. Next we've got D-Day. They were just kids from New Brunswick. Never even left the North Shore before. Dad trained them the best he could. But how could they possibly be prepared? This was the biggest operation the world had ever seen. He'd already served in the First World War, earned the right to stay home, raise his children. But how could he send those boys into battle and not be by their side? Wow. Many were killed that day. One was my father. Major Archie McNaughton was 47 when he died on D-Day, the invasion that marked the beginning of the end of the Second World War. Well, some of these are very difficult to watch. It's because it's real stories of real people's struggles and these moments in history that are so important. But yeah, it's, it, we, we, these are the things we have to learn about and learn from. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, I'm from the UK. I'm someone who supports the British military. I have family in the British military, so I always will support soldiers from any country and the sacrifice they actually make to join the military, putting their life on the line. 
But Canada specifically, I have nothing but respect for, for their part in the world wars, for their their support of Britain and for our collaboration and our relationship. It means a lot to me. Canada is a country I, I love and respect a lot, especially when it c- comes to military wise, to have their support in World War II. I'll have nothing but eternal respect for Canada as a country, but those Can- every Canadian soldier who, who put their life on the line and uh, defended all of our freedom. Uh, yeah, really inspiring and really important Canada's role in World War Two and all other conflicts uh, alongside Great Britain. It, it means a lot to me and I'm sure it means a lot to other British people too. And next we've got Viola Desmond. All I wanted was to see a movie. One down, please. I can't sell downstairs tickets to you people. How dare they? I could afford to buy the more expensive ticket. I run my own business. <laughs> but they refuse to take my money. They left me there all night. On what charge? They said I didn't pay the theater tax. But it was really about color. Sister Desmond, appeal this conviction and your community will stand behind you. Do you have any idea? what this will do to us. So what are you going to do? Make it right. Viola Desmond's case inspired Nova Scotia's civil rights movement. She was pardoned 63 years later based on the injustice of her conviction. Well, another inspiring story of such a strong willed woman. It's really hard to like put ourselves in this, this sort of this time period and the, the, the thoughts that people had and the opinions that people had on colour uh, because we live in a time of, in, especially in Canada, of great multiculturalism where people respect everybody regardless of their skin. Of course, racism is still a problem. But to see the story of people like this who change things so dramatically, uh, again, really inspiring and Things like this are things I really never knew of Canada. We only, as I mentioned, with regards to slavery, we only really hear of these things with regards to the USA. So for me, just to learn more about Canada's situation, and again, things like this, racism, slavery, it's not a Canada problem, a USA problem. It's a problem that every country has had and suffered and we all have to face and learn from to make sure it doesn't happen again. To learn about a a specific case like this with Viola Desmond, really great. She seems like another very important figure in Canadian history with regards to in this situation, the civil rights movement. Uh, Again, another person, you can tell me more about what your knowledge of her is, how she's remembered in Canada today. Okay, next we've got the discovery of insulin. Leonard Thompson, 13 years old, diabetes mellitus, 65 pounds. Starve the child to let them live. The treatment's as cruel as the disease. It's a death sentence. Dr. Banting. This could be it. He's the first to receive this trial. But will it save him? It's not pure enough. So we try again. And again. And again. Before the discovery of insulin, diabetes was a death sentence. Mm. Banting, Best, Collop, and McLeod's breakthrough has saved millions of lives. Wow. Leonard Thompson's was the first. Wow, and another story I knew. I never knew insulin was... Uh, I think I may have I've seen it, but before having this channel, I never knew insulin was something that was created in Canada. Definitely one of the most important discoveries worldwide ever. Uh, As as it mentioned there, it was a death sentence before before the invention of insulin. To see the persistence and the determination of these doctors to actually help that person and to create something that saved, as I said, millions of lives and saves millions of lives and helps millions of people today. 
such an important thing. And I, I just got to give respect again to the actual videos here, how they're produced. They're so high quality, so engaging. It really looks like a movie. Uh, I love these videos. And again, I, I love the stories, the, the happy ones. I even enjoy learning about the sad ones and horrific ones as well. Next, we've got Oscar Peterson. My dad was a railway Montreal, porter. It was just about the only job a black man could get. But he had big plans for us. Music would be our ticket out of poverty. I knew we couldn't afford that piano, so I practiced twice as hard. Nice, Daisy. OK, Oscar, let's hear it. Turns out, I wasn't half bad. Then I found jazz, or it found me. It wasn't all easy, though. I faced a lot of hate, but I found my stage. They call me the man with four hands. Well, I don't know about that, but let's see how far this ticket takes me. From Montreal to Carnegie Hall and far beyond, Oscar Peterson became one of the most recorded and celebrated jazz musicians of all time. Whoa, that one, I, again, I never, I, I'm not like a fan of jazz. I, I can appreciate the music and it definitely is something I would listen to, uh, to relax and things like that, but it's not something I have a great interest and knowledge of. So I, I've never heard of Oscar Peterson, but to hear his story, how he really pushed himself as well. It's another story of determination, you know, like he comes from that sort of poorer background and having a piano was a real luxury, so he really wanted to make use of it, but how that actually created someone who went on to obviously be hugely respected in the field of jazz and uh, again, like, it's this thing with Canada and the USA, like you always hear of these f famous musicians and things from the USA, but to hear of, of a story like this of a great jazz musician from Canada, that just makes me happy. And someone I'll definitely listen to more of his music after learning about this as well, and seeing him perform might be quite enjoyable as well. And uh, next we've got Tom Longboat. I am God Clegg. My name means everything. Tom Longboat! I am Wolf Clan, Onondaga Nation. I've run many different races. I've run to survive. And to be free. I've run to win for honor. His people might be lazy, but this one's damn fast. His people? My people respected our runners. People who carried important messages from village to village. I need a guide to the next post. Dispatch carrier, sir. I can get you there. God sakes, Matt, slow down. Who do you think I am, Tom Longboat? No, sir. I am. Running makes me feel alive. It's everything. Tom Lombo was the first indigenous person to win the Boston Marathon. He ran his way to international fame and became an inspiration to generations of athletes. Wow. Now that one is specifically very inspiring because I'm a huge sports fan. But to hear his story specifically, that is just amazing. Like, Another native person, actually, so we've had a few stories about native people in different contexts, in different uh, situations, but this one specifically, how he was such a great sportsman, not only that, a war hero as well, really contributed during the war, but the first native person to win the Boston Marathon, that is a huge piece of history. Uh, and yeah, that's the, that's the last video. I'm really happy to end on such a happy and inspiring last note. Uh, that's someone, yeah, definitely I'll, I'll need to learn more about. Maybe I'll try and find a documentary on him and find more as a sports fan just to find out more about him specifically. But a very wide range of different videos in different situations, ranging from the really sad to the really happy, uh, horrific to inspiring, to celebrating people, to celebrate inventions and discoveries, to moments in history that were just very sad, but I really feel like I learned so much about Canada and I'm really appreciative of this Historica Canada channel and these Heritage Minutes series of videos. Tell me what you think about these. Tell me more about all these, what, what ones you know about. Tell me more. Tell me if you learned anything from these as well. 
And tell me how these are taught in school. That's something I'm interested to learn. How the next generation of children learn about these moments in history. Uh, and yeah, just fantastic. Canada, as I mentioned, just to go back to it, Canada has a rich history. And absolutely, I feel priv privileged to learn more about it. Uh, thanks.